Hi, I'm Day. This is Daylight Healing Oracle, and let's just get right into the messages for this Taurus new moon. I want to talk a little bit about what the astrology is here and what we are really experiencing as Jupiter has gone into Taurus for the next year, as Mercury has finally stationed direct. You know, this was a really intense eclipse season. There was... <laughs> a lot of inner work that was asked of us here with the mercury retrograde in taurus really asked us to reevaluate our inner world and what we place value on and this scorpio moon has has said to you hey whatever it is that has been underlying in the shadows you must deal with it I personally have a Scorpio moon, so I was very affected by this and it really resonates and believe me, like I understand how difficult it can be to let go of the old thought processes and generational patterns that have really like kept us stuck for so long. So, you know, what's been happening here has a lot to do with the north and south nodes and the axis on which these nodes eclipse each year. So when you think about that, there is a divine plan that is at work here, a much larger picture. If you can imagine, they go around the opposite way of the wheel. So instead of going from Aries to Taurus, it goes from Aries to Pisces and, you know, back around the wheel. Now, that is also the way that the this larger revolution of the Earth moves, which is where we get the procession of the equinoxes and why everyone's talking about this age of Aquarius, right? Because I'm sure you've heard everyone talking about the age of Aquarius. Well, what does that really mean? It means that through the Earth's third movement, there is a giant movement that the Earth makes, and it's basically this wobble of the North Pole moving like that, because the Earth is not completely round. So every 26,000 years or so, the Earth makes this wobble. And if you can think about in these large terms, when you think about, like people talk about the ancient aliens, and you can look into all of these really ancient stories of like maybe what was going on 26,000 years ago. But that was what you could call it, whether it's Adam and Eve, the ancient aliens, whatever you want to, you know, whatever story you want to connect with, each to each their own, you know. That time period around 26,000 years ago was the first Piscean age. I mean, in our evolution here. So, what we just were leaving was the Piscean Age that you could see is uh, really depicted by Christ consciousness, but also religion taking over and religion um, really trying to control and there being like sort of like illusions behind the mask and everything like that, while also you see the spirituality and the love of Christ consciousness and all of the beautiful artwork and uh, creations that comes from that. So when you look at this whole revolution, <laughs> the Aquarian age is about integrating knowledge and acting in new ways, acting and building and creating in more efficient 
circumstances, connections, using technology, and also what comes with technology as we have these evolutions outside of ourselves. It also requires that mirrored evolution within so that we don't get lost and we learn how to handle these new energies because the age of Aquarius really is about the constant, consistent flow, ever changing. There are limitless possibilities. So that's why it's so important to connect with one in our intentions. So when you talk about this big 26,000 year cycle, the reason why I'm talking about the Earth's movement that goes counterclockwise is because uh, sort of when you talk about the um, the zodiac through the zodiac is because I believe that there is some relevance and some consistency. There's such a beautiful fractal pattern of everything. I mean, all of these all of these numbers are like mirror f image fractals of one another. I'm not a scientist and I'm not going to get into the specifics of the um, the bulge at the equator or anything like that. But that is, the bulge at the equator is what leaves room in this spiral where we are not perfect and there is room for evolution. And that is what creates this wobble. And that is what in about 13,000 years we will be at a different North Star because we will be, we were tilted here. And if you can imagine, we're going to be tilted towards a different star. So when I talk about that, that would be like the, in the sister sign of the Zodiac, where we are now, we're in the age of Aquarius, when you're kind of about like at the opposite end, the mirror image, that would be the age of Leo. Well, about 13,000 years ago, when they say Atlantis fell, that is when this, when it was shifting from Virgo to Leo. It was moving from this really like devoted to the temple, but the um, micromanaging of that and how the dark side can come in. And then the Leo evolution of of each one individualizing and creating. And you can look through these astrological ages and really see human history, how we are totally playing out what the planets are here doing. Because if you look before Christ, the, um, the Aries age was all about the warrior. And you can really look throughout history, of of when they say what when there was floods when there what when they talk about the the greek gods and all throughout history you can see where these stories come up how they're played out how they evolve by the way that people tell the stories and how we sort of live them out so why do i talk about this when we're just like in this moon cycle and you're like, well, th there's this just this moon that's going on in the eclipses of the moon every two years. Well, because this is a mirror for us to see. This is a fractal pattern of the same large pattern that we are existing in that comes forth twice a year to really kind of, you know, trigger that change, that evolutionary change. So we have these two eclipses, and you could talk about the ecliptic plane, which is really just this horizontal plane. So it's more like in, in that cross, in that aspect of there being, when there is opposition, it really requires us to face what it is that wants to come up, that wants to evolve, that wants to release. And all of this is going to be some sort 
of amalgamation of energies depending on your astrological chart. So the eclipses talk about the nodes. They talk about the north and the south node. Where is your north node? You're probably going to just see your north node in a chart. It's like that little um, horseshoe. And then there's going to be uh, opposite, opposite that, exactly in the sign in the house, opposite from your north node is going to be your south node. And this is going to tell you your north node is going to be like the head of the dragon, where you're drawn to go and your destiny is taking you. But there also is the south node that we must deal with, that we cannot just run away from or sink into as our comfort zone from how we were in past lives, how we were in our childhood, when we were told, how we were taught to be specifically in our childhood. So we must find a balance between these two. And this is our constant evolutionary process. This is much greater than just what we're going through each year. But it can help shine some light on what we are going through in these specific present times in our lives. Well, with the North Node in, in Taurus and the South Node in Scorpio, we are just coming up to the end of this axis that we've been going through. And now we're going to head into the North Node in Aries, the South Node in Libra. We got a little taste of that during that last Aries new moon this past April. And this axis really talks about who we are, how we uh, fight for our own needs, how we embody our own needs, but also how we balance that with our relationships with others, with seeing others, by allowing for others' opinions. And with this new moon right now, you have Mars and Pluto in an opposition squaring the moon. So Pluto, the planet of power that rules Scorpio, Mars, this warrior planet that rules Aries and also was the original ruler of Scorpio. These are really intense energies that are kind of hovering in the air around this full moon. How do I integrate this? How do I connect with my intuition when I am certain that a fixed idea I have needs to work out in a certain way. That is the key. We must let go, surrender some of our fixed ideas to spirit, to whatever you want to call it. This is what's being asked of us. And it's kind of in this place of the planets where if you don't listen to what the planets are asking you to do. It's not going to be so fun. Um, it can be a lot easier if you allow yourself to go with the flow. Um, there doesn't need to be such rigidity around certain ideas and ex of how things need to happen. You can trust a little bit more. That's really like we're that's what's that's what we're letting go for good here. We are in this epoch shift, this astrological time shift era. And for about and, and you could say that like I, I think it's about like 2156 years. Um, per each astrological sign. So that's why, we're, and, and right now we're in this um, melting pot of change. So you have everybody talking about the age of Aquarius. They've been talking about it since the 70s. When the hippies came up and they started, you know, experimenting with mushrooms and weed and acid and, you know, really expanding their minds, which you know, mushrooms 
were how were <laughs> mushrooms were how um humans first started connecting to like being able to dream and create their own reality and imagine for ourselves and connect to different dimensions different energies i mean we are in this amazing beautiful technological world you can call it magic you can call it technology the Aquarian age is the age of the magician. And right now we're in this sort of like 125 year uh, change point where if you are here, if you are looking into these kinds of things, you are ready <laughs> to bring this in. You are bringing it in. We are bringing it, we are embodying this. And this is so important to continue to see the future in your mind's eye that you desire and segment intend, you know? It's about aligning and coming to our center and then asking where to go rather than enforcing our own fixed ideas on what we believe needs to happen in certain ways. So we also have Jupiter in Taurus this next year, which is really going to bring luck and expansion to what we want to build in our lives that make us feel comfortable that make us feel amazing not like the shallows and pleasures but i'm talking about like what gives you so much joy like waking up in the morning and feeling loved and nourished and creating a life around us that is sustainable and that brings nourishment and, and excitement and passion in the living of that life, that's what you are blessed with. That is what the planets are bringing to us right now. I'm going to have some water. Hydration is so underrated i mean actually not not anymore people are obsessed with hydration which is great but i've always drink tons of water and i still forget so make sure to hydrate plenty that's coming through because i'll realize just wow how thirsty i am also i saw something to that to try a little bit of um, Celtic sea salt because it has three different kinds of magnesium that other salts don't have that allow our cells to hold more water and I also have been using sea salt with iodine and just using that in my healthy food cooking and drinking lots of fresh clean water straight from the source of nature which I'm so grateful to be able to get to that is ritual to me and it's really interesting that these like little things can add so much to our energy so it's i think that um a big theme that's coming up for me is my relationship to the earth and my relationship to being nourished to feeling nourished um i have been dealing with with some autoimmune stuff that has really zapped my energy and learning how to come back to that and how to regulate myself has been so valuable and it really comes from a sacred relationship with the earth a sacred relationship with mother earth i have one card here justice and this is from the uh as above so below decks and this is the so below and you can see in the justice card they've come back from a long day of work taking off those heels
and it's time to rest. It's time to lay back. We've got the King of Wands on the bottom of the deck. This is about owning our passions. The universe is supporting you in owning your passions. It does take some time to allow the unfolding, but it's not meant to have you wait, no. It's meant to have you enjoy each moment, each little simple pleasure along the way. And as we connect more and focus more and expand our focus, that is what expands in our lives, this joy, this gratitude, and then more and more to be joyous and grateful for shows up in such miraculous ways. Not in the ways that our fixed ideas have them. Sometimes they do show up in that way. I mean, you, it will, it really can. But allow room for the universe to surprise you with its miracles and with the winding paths that give you these beautiful experiences where we learn so much about ourselves, where we heal and we release and we're able to step forward and experience everything we've asked for in the present moment in a way of such gratitude. So I hope you have a wonderful, amazing Jupiter and Taurus season, Taurus new moon. If you'd like to get a reading with me, you can check out my uh, link below. I'd love to hear from you. Sending you all the blessings in the world.